tranquil hills surrounding Islamabad are a world away from London, former playground of one of the world's most notorious cricketers. I can't say I'm, I've become an angel, I still have my weaknesses. But, you know, religion doesn't expect you to sort of become an angel overnight. Imran Khan, Pakistan's legendary cricket captain and self-styled champion of the Pakistani people. A vociferous critic of the country's military regime, he joins the largest opposition movement facing General Musharraf during his eight-year rule. Khan distances himself from his past when his romantic liaisons ignited as much attention as his sporting exploits. His playboy past is something that he very much likes to play down. He likes to say, oh, you know, I never took it that seriously while he obviously enjoyed it at the time. Can the Lion of Lahore transfer his prowess to the political arena? Philanthropist and politician Imran Khan began his career when he rose to international stardom as a world-class cricketer. To succeed in, in, uh, as a sportsman, you have to have complete focus on the sport and you have to have complete passion for the sport. And that usually means that you neglect everything else. Khan applied this philosophy of unstoppable determination to his sport developing the winning fast bowl which came to define him as a player. And I think it was the first fast bowler that Pakistan had who actually worked hard on his fitness. I wanted to become a fast bowler, but that bowling action stood in the way. So I'm probably the only bowler in the history of the game who completely changed his action. And it's never happened before and everyone told me don't do it. With his signature bowl and lethal batting, Khan is hailed as one of the finest all-rounders the game has ever produced. Well, if you're talking about Pakistan cricket, I think he's definitely in the top five. But I think in world cricket also, he will be in the top five all-rounders of all time. He made his test debut playing for Pakistan in 1971 at the age of 18. From that day to when I left cricket and when Imran left cricket, it was a long, long journey. Ten years later, he was rewarded with captaincy of the team, going on to bring home the World Cup trophy to Pakistan for the first and only time. Winning the World Cup was only so satisfying because I was way past my prime. I played the whole World Cup injured. I, was, I had a torn cartilage in my shoulder. If I hadn't played, you know, the team would have been knocked out. And just watching the happiness in this country, I mean, the whole nation went wild. The pictures were enough to show who was winning. Seven balls, 28 scores. How is it possible? In a nation obsessed with cricket, the man who brought them the trophy shot to hero status. Khan's road to glory began 54 years ago in Lahore. Born into a privileged family, Education was paramount. Cricket was in the blood. Well, this is my, uh, my, my parents and my sisters. I, you know, we grew, I grew up here. And then this, this whole locality is called Zaman Park. It wasn't like it is now. There were only about six, seven houses here. Open fields. You know, we all had our cows and our buffaloes and our chicken and our goats here. It was like living on a farm. It's still a beautiful area, but it's not what the area where I grew up. Now this is the park where I grew up playing cricket. All my cousins we used to be playing here, all sports, but especially cricket. We are the only family where three sisters' sons captained the country and were all Oxbridge Blues. And so we would all, uh, you know, in the evening be here playing and competing. You know, we were very competitive. There, there were a lot of times I would go home in tears when I was younger, but I soon realized that tears didn't help. You know, you had to uh, 
It didn't make any difference if you cried. So you actually you toughen up very quickly. Khan attended Lahore's prestigious public school, Aitchison College, with lifetime friend Yusuf Salahuddin. Basically, this the school that we went to was made by the British for the chiefs or you know the landed aristocracy of Punjab. You know there was a great deal of emphasis on education, both sides of my family. And when I got selected to play for Pakistan, I was still in school, and my mother told me that I could only go to the tour of England if I promised her that I would finish my education. Khan honoured his mother's wishes, following his cousins out of Pakistan to the pastures green of Oxford University in England. But it was his arrival in London which really brought Khan into the spotlight. Forget about being out of Pakistan. I'd hardly been out of Lahore. And suddenly from this insular background, I arrive in, in England. You know, it was like a, a, a time of great discovery. I remember 24 hours were not enough in a day. The dashing young cricketer quickly became a darling of London's press, hailed as a playboy due to the string of socialites photographed on his arm. I think Emran Khan was, in those days, was definitely seen as a, 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 um, a Lothario, a playboy. Very quickly, you know, this dashing, you know, a good-looking um, young man made a mark on the sort of London social scene. But with attention often comes scandal. In 1992, socialite Sita White claimed that Khan was the father of her baby daughter. A claim that Khan has always refuted. Hello. Khan's celebrity peaked in the summer of 1996 when his marriage to heiress Jemima Goldsmith captured worldwide attention. She was so much younger than him, still at university, and suddenly this young darling of the social scene, very beautiful, very bright, very clever, um, decided to convert to Islam embark on learning Urdu and move to Pakistan. I think people were, were transfixed by them. As a couple, they were incredibly glamorous, incredibly beautiful, and it was interesting. The couple began to build a family together, giving birth to two sons, Kasim and Suleiman. But the colour of sporting life had its limits for Khan. Coming up in part two, we see how the loss of his mother to cancer prompted a shift in focus for the cricketing hero. Her death changed me in the way that it made me uh, ask the question, what am I doing here on this earth? What is the purpose of my existence? And what happens uh, to me once I die?